new, 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 new. Just engineering thing doesn't work out. There's always your singing career. Lady Ada, what is... The baby loves my singing. What is the new... Somebody here. Products of the week this week. Okay, we've got the tiniest LEDs known to man. They come in a pack of 50 because they are so small. This is one millimeter by one millimeter NeoPixel LEDs. Um, but a photographer is great at macro photography. Look at this like beautiful photo. Oh, nice. uh, you can see the bonded LED in the green, red, and blue dyes. Um, there are NeoPixels. So on the bottom, there's four pads. Um, and you provide power, ground, data in, data out. You can chain them. They're extremely tiny. You know, they're fairly bright. They draw 5 milliamps per. Um, I will say, you know, having used these, if you're going to place a ton of them, like, dozens on a pcb you do have to provide some heat sinking somehow so like the back should be a copper ground plane that you know tries to dissipate some of that uh heat away because um you know if you're especially especially if you're powering them from five volts you're drawing you know five volts and 15 milliamps for all the leds and before you know it you know the the, the density makes them uh, heat up quite a bit but they're tiny and they're cute and we have them in a strip cut tape strip of 50 pieces um not hand solderable i would use either a hot plate or hot air but even hot air is tough because again they're so small they'll blow away next up, next up um a little handy usb switch we were going to use this for a project um so you have one usb port and you have two devices and you want to switch between two different devices like what would connect to the usb port as the peripheral you want a mux um so this is what it is uh so if you go to the first photo so on the top and the bottom is the usb host connection so it's ground d minus d plus and five volts and there's a usb c port uh with the 5.1k um resistors required to kind of make it a standard usb 2.0 port and then um by default port one is connected but then if you flip i think s is pulled low by default if you pull it high port two is connected and then if you pull it low port one is connected. you flip back and forth as much as you want um there's a uh switch inside a little chip in the middle that is designed for usb 2 480 megabit per second speed so it's you know can be used with video devices and high speed usb devices um it doesn't cut power which is a pro or a con just something to watch out for some that's a great feature this is not what i want <laughs> yeah it depends if you want something that cuts the power this is not it it will switch only the data lines which means your devices stay powered but they have to know that they're being re-enumerated. And I will say that some microcontrollers, depending on the USB stack, will not re-enumerate. So if you are, you know, I sound like, you know, I switched like a FTDI chip and a USB stick, like a, a key, um, data key. Those worked fine because they recognized, oh, the data lines went away and then they came back and they re-enumerated and came on. But like, uh, you know, I think I had like a Trinky and it didn't. Um, so what you want to do is if you have a microcontroller and you're running your own USB stack, either add code to detect that you lost USB connection and re-enumerate, or you'll want to also connect that like the S pin or whatever that's controlling the S pin, also reset the microcontroller to tell it, hey, I want you to kick again, start over, and uh, try re-enumerating USB because a lot of them, you know, will only really try the USB connection at the beginning. Again, for microcontrollers, for a lot of like, your mice, keyboard, you know, USB serial adapter, oh, they're going to be fine because they're all using hard-coded yeah. uh, USB interfaces that will reconnect when the data um, resets. So um, maybe handy. It's not a hub. It's a switch, one or the other. Okay. And the start of the show, besides you, Lady Ada, our team, our customers, our community, everyone who does open source hardware and shows and shares things it is... This cute TPS61040 booster. Um, I use this chip in a lot of our OLED and TFT displays uh, when I have to generate a 12 volt signal or even higher. Uh, it's adjustable. Um, the, the chip is adjustable. This breakout is not. Um, again, I use it for OLEDs. Sometimes if I have, you know, a lot of LEDs in a row, it's not a very powerful booster. You're only going to get like 40, 50 milliamps, maybe a little bit more if you give it five volts. And you can only give it three, like 2.8, whatever, to six volts input. It'll boost up to 12 volts. And sorry, but input is two to six volts. Output is 12 volts. Again, you know, 40 to 80 milliamps or so. Um, not very powerful, but it's inexpensive and small and simple. And, you know, again, when you don't need, a, you don't need a lot of current. For example, I talked about high voltage programming microcontrollers earlier. Sometimes you just need a 12 volt signal on the reset line to tell it, hey, you know, I'm putting you into this high voltage programming mode. I want you to kick out of whatever, you know, setup you're in. 
and permit me to do high voltage programming or you're programming EEPROM and you need to power it from 12 volts, but you don't need more than 50 milliamps. This will work just fine. It's a lot easier than getting your own separate 12 volt power supply. So a little handy mini booster. Um, again, I use this chip a lot to replace the fan 5331. Uh, which is no longer made. I think we chatted about this on a great search because I need to find a replacement. Um, so I'm going to use this all the time because I'm always like, I need 12 volts for something. Uh, and this board will supply. And that is new products. New, new.